Some others are saying, what will the new year bring? We don't know. I'll say a little bit about that today, but we don't know. What I do know is that every day God's going to be present. God is going to be with us. God's going to take care of us. So, thankful for your diligence to be here this morning. A uh, few things that are on here all the time. The nursery is available and uh, headsets for the hard of hearing. Uh, the small group meeting, I hope you'll be reading about them. The Heifer Project, uh, the Mint Tree that's still out there in the hall. And it goes on and on. The backpack program, we don't want to forget about all the items that are necessary to keep that going. You see that. Mary Miller passed away. You heard that last week. I will say to you today, instead of when I go up to pray, that Marjorie uh, Guthrie passed away late, late Friday night or uh, early Saturday when I saw Allison. And was so, you know, she's kind of tired going through things. Uh, they are right now at uh, State and Borowski making uh, arrangements. So I can't tell you what those arrangements are yet, but they'll be towards the end of the week and after the first, so just keep an eye on the paper if you would, please. Uh, you're going to talk about, where to go? Mike, you, you're going to talk about envelopes and all of that stuff? I'll let you go up with it. I thought you said you had announcements. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. She does. <laughs> Okay, I have a couple things to mention uh, to you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board if you wanted uh, a 2019 uh, statement to sign up. Well, the statement went missing. Uh, someone told me that Santa Claus took it, but I think it was the Grinch. In any case, uh, if you want a 2019 statement, uh, which I usually put out in January, uh, give me a call, and I'll, I'll keep the list at home. Okay. Uh, next item is I uh, want to remind you that there's still some boxes of uh, envelopes on the uh, table out by in the narthex. Uh, please pick uh, uh, one up if you don't have it, and if you're you don't have a box, and there's not one on the table, then let me know and I'll, I'll give you a, uh, a blank box of envelopes. And finally, uh, the pledge cards. If you haven't filled out your pledge card and turned it in, uh, there are cards on the uh, welcome table out in the narthex. Uh, please uh, turn that in as soon as you can so we can plan on uh, the budget for this uh, coming year. Thank you. Does anyone else have an uh, announcement they want to lift up of anything anybody needs to share before we smile and sing joy to the world? Let's stand together and let me see your teeth. Uh, let's get happy and uh, let's give thanks to the Lord. Joy to the world. of his love and wonders wonder 
Lord God, we are so thankful that we can come into your presence. We can come into your presence and know that you're here because you promised you would be. And so, Lord, we come. You come in the Spirit, and you anoint us from on high, and you wash us over with your Spirit, and you touch us in a powerful way this day so that we might, as we move into 2020, grow, grow and grow some more spiritually. Anoint us. Be with me. Be with every piece of music and every song lifted and every voice. Be with us as we pray. Be with us as we love and hold and care for one another. Anoint and fill us with life and goodness all through this service. I pray it and ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I know there's no choir anthem today, but special music. Uh, I know I also forgot to tell you to go ahead and shake hands, so go ahead and shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Let's have the children come forward. I think there's some anyway. Okay, can you all look out that way? I'm not going to make you get up again. But, but, but say, good morning. Oh. And I didn't even ask you to make a loud noise, but we can do a little better than that, all right? I don't care. Do it more loudly. Look at them. Good morning, church. Bless you. Give me some. Bless you. And have a happy new year. Oh, you're trying. Okay, church, help them out. Bless you, children. And may you have a happy, healthy, and holy new year. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I'm looking. I'm looking for a real little... I'm looking for a real little one. Hey, sister. Tell, come on. Hey, hon. Give me your first name. Come here. Just come up and stand beside me, okay? Just stand beside me. Just stand up, okay? And I'm not going to... You just stand right there, okay? You don't have to do nothing, all right? See how... See, I don't have a baby up here today. I'd be holding it. How would it be if you never grow up past where you are right now? Would that be any good? You'd be all right with that? <laughs> How many of you would be thankful to be stuck right where you're at now and never grow another inch, never learn another thing, never do anything with what you've learned already? How many of you would like that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't be any fun? No. Why wouldn't you like it? See, we're, we're meant to grow, right? We're meant to learn. We're meant, we're meant to be touched by the Lord. It says in John 1, uh, the first chapter, that Jesus grew 
in stature, physically, and he grew spiritually. And if Jesus needs to grow physically and spiritually, guess what you all need? You need to grow physically and spiritually. I mean, sometimes, to be honest with you, how about you folks? I wish I was still that age and <laughs> didn't have to worry about much or anything. But we have to grow up. When I, when I talk to, to your parents and family and friends and whoever else is out there connected with you today, I'm going to be talking to them about the fact that Christmas is done. We know what it means. So what, do, com, what comes after it? What's responsible for you? What do you need to do? Well, not only do you need to go to school, and you need to learn from every teacher that teaches, you've got to learn all the basics of life because you can't function in life if you can't add and subtract and write a sentence and do all the stuff that you'll have to learn as you grow. Spiritually, you need to be in church. You need to be here. You need to go out to the Sunday school. You need to be other times whenever we're going to... You know, you taught us beautifully over the Christmas season. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful music and word. And we're so thankful for what they taught us. Because those are the seeds that's going to carry them for a lifetime. And we got to keep planting the seeds. And we got to keep growing them spiritually. That's our job. It's not the school system's job. It's not anybody else's job. First of all, it's the parents' job. And then it's ours, the church. And so I pray that you grow and grow and grow to beautiful and handsome young men and women. I pray that you blossom in your inner life so that there's a glow from Jesus from you all the time. What do you think? Would that be a good thing, to glow like Jesus? How about some of you folks? You'd like to glow like Jesus? Nothing's holding you back from that, nothing. Let's pray. Lord God, I greet you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for our children. I thank you, Lord, for the love we share for them. I thank you for families. I thank you for growth. I thank you for all the things that you give us. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Bless them now as they move out of this moment and still go into a teaching moment some more. Bless them throughout the year. Bless them in the coming year. And bless us as a family as we minister to them and each other. I pray and I ask it in the name of Jesus. And all God's children said, amen. Can you say me? Amen, children. Amen. Oh, if you want out of here, you got to do it louder than that. Amen. 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 Loud. Amen. amen. All right. Good shot. Bless you. Thank you. I know the ushers have a microphone. I've already told you about Marge and we talked about Mary. Uh, certainly, I see a lot of people that are outside this church and are in a hospital right now. A couple of them are critical. So I just ask you, they're from our sister churches, just remember them. And, and some are traveling. Some's going to be gone for three months. And, and uh, I, I throw the, the name of Ann Bates at you as she continues to, to work at trying to get stronger. And... Uh, Yet uh, it's been difficult for Ann. So, remember. so, anybody have a prayer request or a joy that they want to share this morning? I have a joy. My family from uh, Pennsylvania have come to visit me for Christmas holidays. Anybody else? I will tell you that Sid Case has been struggling again, uh, but he was doing real good when I went to wish him a Merry Christmas on Christmas Eve. And uh, he was supposed to get back to his place, but I noticed uh, when I ran in for a second the other day, uh, just to see somebody else from in, I didn't get a chance to see Sid, that he was, he still had his name on a room in rehab. So, but uh, God is working, and uh, all of his children and family and some other family members were coming to see him, 
uh, during the Christmas season, so I pray it's been joyful for them. If there's no one else, then we will turn to the prayer hymn, While Shepherds Watch Their Flock. shepherds watch their flocks by night all seated on the ground the angel of the lord came down and glory shone around and glory shone around fear not said he for mighty dread had seized their troubled mind. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to all of humankind, to all of humankind. To you in David's town this day is born of David's line. A Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed. All meanly wrapped in swathing bands and in a manger laid, and in a manger laid. Thus spake the seraph, and forthwith appeared a shining throng of angels praising God on high, who thus addressed their song, who thus addressed their song. All glory be to God on high and to the earth be peace. Good will henceforth from heaven to earth begin and never cease, begin and never cease. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Well, Lord, we continue in our worship. We continue by lifting our prayers, our thanksgivings, our praises. Lord, I thank you for the joy that you bring to us, even though life is difficult at times. I pray for the blessings because if we don't pay attention, we let them go by and we miss them. And Lord, we should not miss the blessings the blessings that you offer up, the blessings that you touch us with, the blessings that you fill us with. Some good things are going to happen this year, I'm sure, without a doubt, in each and every one who sits here and those who are not here. God is going to be working, but there will also be tears. We all already have two, Lord, uh, funerals that will be processing through this week and, through, and up till Saturday on the 11th. Lord, we thank you for you being a mighty God, an awesome God, a powerful God, a God who fills us with goodness and grace. I thank you, Lord, for a God who hears our prayers. And I thank you that you anoint the pages and pages and pages of prayer that we'll have throughout the year. I thank you for our dedication to be in worship. And I thank you for the dedication for us to be a part of this worship if in nothing else, this moment right here when we pray together. Yes, a special blessing on the Guthrie family. I ask you to touch them. March lived a good, strong life. Of course, she hasn't got out much in the last maybe six, seven months. 
But Lord, she was blessed and she knows it. She was thankful to go home to be with you and I know that. I think of the Walters family, Lord. Uh, brother uh, struggled uh, this week. Some bleeding, Lord, and uh, almost ended his life. We're thankful that there's been some improvement. We ask you to be with uh, Lotus and we ask you to take care of Dick. I ask you to be with every name on, on this list. I ask you to be with our pastor and his family. And she's out and traveling and will be coming home, uh, I'm sure, this week. I ask you to fill us as we gather together on New Year's Day. And I pray that we focus not only on the new year, but what it means to have Christ in the new year. So again, fill us, hold us, hug us. Heal us what we need. Move through us. Speak through us. Teach through us anoint us so that we might be able to smile and to laugh and to spread the good news. I pray that and ask it in the name of Jesus, knowing also that there are times, Lord, we don't know how to pray, and so you taught us uh, this wonderful prayer in the Word. You told us to pray like this, our Father. Well, it's time for us to gather up our tithes, gifts, and offerings. And let me, let me just say, I know that on Christmas Eve, you got a chance to use that back door. I know that some of you uh, uh, came to that door today, not able to get in. I apologize for that, but pretty soon I'm fairly certain. It's open. Okay, that, so they can walk out. Yes. Yeah. So you might not have got in, but you can go out uh, an easier way uh, and dodge the raindrops uh, a little quicker. But it's, it's, uh, it's going to be amazing what you'll see in the next month or so. And all is coming together, and we thank you for your gifts. I'm sure there are going to be others in the next couple of Sundays or something will tell you how well you've done in your giving. But I just know that we trust in the Lord, and he takes care, and he'll take care of you too. Let's have the ushers come forward, please.
Lord God, we're so thankful. We've just gone through the giving season. You gave your son. You gave your all. You ask us to do the same. And Lord, we have given our tithes and gifts and offerings, and I pray that you multiply them, that you multiply them all year long so that we can't even begin to imagine how well financially we're going to do. We need to trust that of faith and believe it. But Lord, I'm willing to go there. I pray you are too. So anoint these gifts, anoint the givers, and bless us in a wonderful and powerful way. I pray it in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's turn uh, to heart the herald angels say. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, I'm thankful that you give me, you give us the word. I thank you, Lord, that you talk to us not only through the week and not only the devotional time, but every Sunday as a part of worship we hear, Lord, you speak. I pray it's not us. I pray it's you. This day I pray you'll speak this day and our hearts will be open and receive. I pray that and ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I suppose most of you here are old enough and uh, you all know Billy Graham and I don't mean your age by that, but you know that he's put out uh, 
uh, Billy Graham Evangelistic Association has put out the Decision Magazine for years and years and years. And so every, 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 every month when it comes in, there's an article from past yeah, where Billy Graham gets a chance to speak through the word in the written page again. And I was, I was reading that written page uh, a couple weeks ago uh, when it dawned on me that I needed to share a little bit of what he did say and what God continues to say through Dr. Graham, who was an amazing man. And uh, uh, I, I had the privilege of meeting him more than once. Uh, had the privilege of being a part of the prayer team for the Cleveland uh, crusade, the, the last Cleveland crusade they had. And it was a joy working with that whole family. They are special and anointed. If you've never been part of that and you're close enough to be a part of it, even with Franklin leading now, don't be afraid to go see. He asked a question in this article, what does Christian mean? What does Christmas mean? Now, I, I think and hope and pray that I don't really have to tell you what Christmas means. You already knows that. You know, you know that God came. You know that he brought life and light. You know he came as a child. You know his name was Jesus. You know that he has uh, answered the world so that we might be redeemed. You, you know that he was a blessing all his life. We, we know that he grew and he taught and he was willing to die on the cross and he was willing to go in to the very depths of hell. And then he arose and was willing to bring that risen life to us. And that's what it means. It all starts at Christmas. But as our liturgical candle calendar goes, it ends on Resurrection Sunday morning. Now, in between that time, I, I don't know exactly who came up with the word, but in, in, the, in, in, in between that time, it's just called, according to the church calendar, ordinary time. And I, 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 I don't believe in ordinary time. I don't know what you want to believe in, but, but I don't believe in ordinary time. I think, that I think every morning when I wake up, something extraordinary. Amen. And I should be looking for something extraordinary to be happening. I went in uh, to see uh, a man who almost died. Uh, I don't know how many of you knew Richard Walters. Uh, he wasn't here very long before he got sick, and then I've been ministering to them at home, and he was a member of First Church for a long time. And uh, really, when I first passed his room, I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I'm, I'm here and he's, and he's gone. And, uh, but he got me in that room, and in the midst of the doctors fussing around, in the midst of all the bottles, in the midst of running to getting blood, because his blood was way down in the low count. And, and, and while everything is going on, he, he said, Pastor Tom's here? Yeah, he says, I got to tell him something. And he says to me, you know, I was sleeping the other day. In the middle of the night, Jesus came to me. And he said, I don't have to worry about anything. God's going to take care of me. And he said, not only that, he affirmed that he'd take care of Lotus too. And then he looked at me and he says, do you think I'm crazy? And I said to him, brother, if you're crazy, I'm far gone because I believe in the message. I believe that God can come and speak to us. There are some of you who have testimonies as good as mine and greater of God coming to you and speaking to you in extraordinary ways. Most of the time, you and I ain't looking for it. And so sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we want to believe what people tell us, that the apostolic era is gone and there's no more miracles and there's no more signs and all there is is what? If I treat every day as ordinary, I'm going to get in a rut. I don't know about you. 
And I hate being in a rut where, where I'm crawling out of bed and I'm crawling to the car and going, oh, well, here I go again. Here I go again. See, I want to be able to run out to the car with joy and move. And I got ministry to do and I got, I got people to see and I got a smile to give and I've got a joy to speak of. And we'll share a little bit of that as I close the sermon today. I'm not so sure, I'm not so concerned about where you're at as far as what Christmas means. I am concerned in all the places I ever preached. I'm concerned about you not knowing what comes after Christmas. Because Jesus didn't come to save you just for you to sit on that and to move into ordinary time as if something powerful has not happened in your life. God has moved in your life. God has touched you. And if you have given your life to him, that light has filled you. God's spirit has washed over you. You've been filled with the good news. There's something for us to do day after day after day, and that's what comes after. We, we have the story of, of, of Joseph and Mary. And starting with Joseph, uh, throw that first slide up for Matthew 1. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. And Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins now brothers and sisters that ain't ordinary and I don't know about you but I know this much if I was Joseph dream or not I'd be kind of whoa what is that all about and yet what happens is Joseph with a deep faith an abiding faith hears and responds He's told not to be afraid. And I'll do another verse that says not to be afraid. I hope and pray that you go into the new year, coming after Christmas, past an ordinary time into an extraordinary time, that you're going to let God use you and you're going to have the faith to believe and trust what he says to you no matter what. So when God tells me something, I believe it. You know, there's a, it's not that old, but it says that's good enough for me. What God said was good enough for Joseph. But to say, don't be afraid. To say to him, your wife's going to get pregnant and you don't have anything to do with it. I want you to trust that. I want you to accept that. Your son's going to come. You're going to raise him. But he's come to redeem the people from their sin. As we move into the new year, I, I, you know, I know most of you fairly well. Some I don't know all that well. But the same question comes that comes to me every time I face somebody who's on their deathbed. That question is, are you ready to meet Jesus? I mean, we can do all of Christmas. And we can make all the trees look nice. We can dress up. We can say all the right words, read the right scriptures and still miss eternity. Now you may say to me, that's, that's impossible. I gave my life to Christ, that's it. Nothing more to do. That's not what God says, and that's not what Scripture says. That's not what comes after. In that extraordinary glow and time of following Christ, we get an opportunity like Joseph in blind faith to move forward. Letting that sun grow in you so that you might move out with that son to all the world and they might find faith too. Will you allow God to remove you? Move all the fears for today and tomorrow, trusting and obeying the word of God and have that blind faith that Joseph had. Then Mary, Luke 1. Gabriel came to Mary and said to her, Greetings! And this word favored one. You know, we, you hear this, Holy Mary, full of grace. And, and, and God is saying, I'm, I'm filling you with a gracious gift. 
The Lord is with you. Hallelujah. If you don't know that, you don't know anything. The Lord is with you. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. You have been given a gracious gift by God. By God. Did you hear that? Now understand, Mary did some head scratching, had a discussion with this angel, made it very clear that she didn't quite get it yet. And we see her as her son grows and goes through all the stages and all the hurts and all the pains as he enters the teaching, as he moves toward that cross. She sees all of that, but she's told from the very beginning that that's grace. That's grace. Finding favor. Are we going to find favor? Are we going to seek God's grace as we move into this new year? Are we going to ask God for that grace to fill us? Are we willing to accept that good or bad? Good or bad? Good or bad? It's still a gracious gift from God and we're to grow in the receiving of it. What disappointments and heartbreaks are going to come? I don't know. But I'm hoping that somehow you'll see them as gifts of grace. Most of you, and I try not to, to, to do it too often, but, you know, a year and three quarters ago, you know, I certainly didn't see my son dying as a, a special gift of grace. And of course, my family and I, we continue to work through it now. And somehow in the midst of that, we don't have any choice to understand that God do what needed to be. And God moved with us. Now see, when it talks about the gracious gift, the gracious gift we received was the ability to move forward. I remember coming, my son dying on Friday and we came to church on Sunday and somebody said, what are you doing here? And my response was, where else am I supposed to be? See, that's what it's about. Receiving God's favor, God coming alive in you and you using that gift day after day, no matter what hits you in the face, whether it's laughter or tears, God is with you. Luke 15. There's more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. There is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. I'll tell you what, when somebody gives their life to Christ, there's hooting and hollering in heaven. And, you know, I've had in my lifetime a a real joy of, of whether in revival or whatever the case uh, having others come and kneel down before the Lord, but especially my own congregations when they came down and knelt before the Lord to give them their life. And I could get them on their feet and I could turn them to the congregation and say, here's another one. The angels are singing and let's sing with them because God has brought another one into the family of God. The angels came to the shepherds, rejoicing, giving thanks. They went and saw Jesus. It transformed them. And when they left, they kept singing. But they were also praising. And they were also getting ready to spread the good news. And when we are God's children, spreading the good news is a part of who we are. Uh, <clears throat> Luke, I mean, Isaiah 43, put that one up. I think that's the last one. Thus says the Lord, your creator, and he who formed you, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Is that so? That's something you need to respond to. You know, if you don't want any fear, guess what? You have to be redeemed. In order to be redeemed, you have to let that life come to you. And once you let that light come to you, then God wants to use you to help others find the same grace and goodness. That's what it's all about. 
There is no need to fear the future. Fear not. God reigns. God is sovereign. God has a plan. God formed you, brought you into being, redeemed you. Fear not, I will be with you in the waters. And there's more to that, but in two things, in the waters and in times of trouble, which encompasses all of it. See, I, I go out, no matter what the struggle, no matter how much hurt, no matter how much pain, I climb in that car. Every time I climb in, it hurts. Every time I climb out, it hurts. But I go, and I do. I don't do it for the money. I do it for the joy of knowing you. I do it for the joy of being in your presence. I do it for the joy of helping you find God's grace in your life. I find joy in the peace that comes to you that passes all understanding. Now, Dr. Graham says from these things where we need to move forward, there are three phenomena that are also observed at Christmas time that call us forward. A star, a new song, and the good news. A star. Billy Graham says it's God taking a bright light from the ceilings of heaven and hangs it in a dark sky over a troubled world. Over a troubled world. Jesus, as it says in John, brings light and life to the world. Brings life and light to you because you're part of the world. But yet you're not of the world. You belong to Jesus and you have a light to shine. And so God raised that star so he raised you to be a beacon of light and goodness and holiness so that we might bring others to Christ. He gives us a new song Billy Graham says, with the coming of Jesus, hope sprang in the hearts of the people. The world took up the refrain, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Sing it. To tell you the truth, when I was 17 years old and first started in the church, I never thought that I'd be singing solos within a year. Be going to different churches with my youth. We would sing together, and I would sing some solos, and we would just be part of the church family. One of the first things that brought me to the church in the first place and helped me get redeemed was music. Not the music we sing today, but the good old hymns. Oh, I have nothing. Hey, I, I don't mean to stir the pot by saying, you know, that one's better than the other. That's not what I'm saying, because I learned to, to grow into contemporary music, and, and I'm still... I'm still trying to learn to grow into some of the stuff that, that, that we do because it's just not me and not my style. But you know what? God just wants you to sing. Whatever your style may be, whatever your joy it is, God wants to sing. wants you to sing. If I've had one problem in the church that's consistent, it's people coming to me and saying, we don't know that music and we don't want to have to sing it anymore. We want to sing the good old hymns. And I said, do you know that the church people, when them first good old hymns showed up, they were fussing and fuming as much as you were. <laughs> yeah. When Wesley wrote all those songs, he was taking bar tunes and making Christ tunes out of them. Hallelujah. The one thing I miss is singing. My ears just don't cooperate. I can get by, hopefully, sometimes a cappella, but... But other things, I strain and yank. But I miss, I miss singing. I still sing. You know, every once in a while, my wife slugs me and says, "You know, I'm doing this. I'm sorry, you know." But, but uh, when those hymns come out, even like the Christmas songs today, there's nothing like singing a new song. The third thing, the good news: salvation has come. What are you going to do with it? We've been saved. Jesus is the focus of Christmas. The star, song, gifts, worship, joy, hope all came because of him. And I praise you do all of them, that you shine and you sing and you know the gift and you share with others the worship, the joy that comes from the Lord, the hope 
that there is no real life without. Dr. Grant says we are meant to find peace, but rejection does not bring peace. It just leaves our life with fear and anxiety. Praise the Lord. God came to bring the good news to those whose life are filled with bad news. I read that paper every day. Ain't much in it. You know, there's bigger papers, maybe better papers. But what I do know is that there's very little good news in our newspaper. It seems the world just keeps... One of the questions, I just gazed at it real quickly in the French paper, paper, one of the questions they tell people to, you know, send an email, tell them what you think. And, and here's the question. Will there be as many mass murders in 2020 as there was in 2019? I can't even imagine when I, when I was younger, even when I started out in the ministry, I can't imagine worrying about all those mass murders. And yet now, we, we have, we're brought in and taught how to handle what may happen in the church. It's a sad time, but the good news hasn't gone away. The good news is still there. The good news is filling our life, erasing the bad news, and bringing us more and more closer to Christ. Brothers and sisters, we've been called to share God's love. And we're supposed to share that love with everybody we encounter in this life, especially starting with our family. God's gift of love is the world's greatest need. So as we go forth this day and we move into 2020, don't forget this. Jesus hasn't gone anywhere. He's still there. He's still with us. His spirit is still moving. Nothing changes. All we have to do is Allow the Lord to fill us and move out. Share the grace and goodness and the good news. Dr. Graham says through the life, death, and resurrection, we are rescued. He still brings hope, forgiveness of sin, a new song, and a healing for the spiritually wounded. No, I don't know what the future is going to bring. But this I know for a fact. The older I get, the better I know it. It's simply this, each day, every day, we ought to be preparing to meet God. Because some of us won't be around for 2021. That's not bad news. I hope we're all living in 2021, but for some of us, friends, family, they're not going to be around. But if we're prepared, we're prepared, then we have a life-changing experience. Choose to live for Christ. Let Christ fill your life and anoint you with his power. Be a light. Sing a song and spread the good news. And all God's people said, Amen. Now we're going to sing again. There's a song in the air. You know that... Uh, even though it seems to be past that, you, you know that I always open the altar. If you've not received light or you don't know that song or you don't feel strong enough to spread the good news, just bring it to Jesus. You're welcome at the altar. So let's sing together and bless each other and let God anoint us and fill us. There's a song in the air. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry, and the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing, for the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. There's a tumult of joy or oh, the wonderful birth for the virgin sweet boy is the Lord of the earth. I the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. In the light of 
above that star lie the ages impearled, and that song from afar has swept over the world. Every hearth is a flame, and the beautiful sing in the homes of the nations that Jesus is King. We rejoice in the light, and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throng. I we shout to the lovely evangel they bring, and we greet in his cradle our Savior and King. My brothers and sisters, go forth. What comes after Christmas is you. You've received the gift. You've been anointed by it. You've been graced. You've been favored. You've been loved. You've been cherished. So go out. Go out and be the light and sing. Don't ever grow tired of singing. Whatever your style is, don't anybody laugh at your style. Sing your song. My kids always used to get mad because said, that's not the lyric to the song. You're making them up. And I said, I don't know any lyrics. I'm just singing what, what I want to sing. And I, mean, I always sing it in the car. They get upset because I don't turn the radio on. I don't need a radio. I sing. Now I, I'm in the car by myself so I can sing all I want. It doesn't bother anybody. Go forth and sing. And spread the good news, my brothers and sisters. Spread the good news because it is good news. In the midst of all the bad stuff, there's still some good stuff coming. And so you enjoy God's grace and be thankful for it. I pray it and ask it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's children said. Amen. Amen.